to Kennedy. That's Haney and now Benford. 2.45 to go. Double team. Kennedy gets through the packs. Leaves it for Haney. It goes in. They'll wave it off. And Kennedy's he steps on the baseline. Hahn brings it in to Cipriano. 71-63. Hahn thought better the shot. Cipriano will try it. Got it. Andy Cipriano. Cipriano now has 14. Kennedy to Benford. Cipriano just climbed up on Benford and wasted a foul. Got his second. The line goes Benford. There's a good guy to foul. Foul again, 66% on the year from the line. And Benford has one of four tonight from the line. I think it's one of four. That one finally went down. Benford talks to himself quite a bit. Seventy-three, sixty-five. Now, two fifteen to play. Hahn, the Ritzdorf from way outside, missed it. Got his own rebound. Puts it back up. That one won't go down. For the third time, this one goes in. Ritzdorf is definitely a candidate for the Hustle Award. Kennedy, Dewalt, thought better of going in on Mohana that time. A minute fifty-three to go. Six-point lead as Benford brings it in for Quincy with their lead. Taken away by Ritzdorf. To Cipriano. Cipriano in traffic, stops, free throw line jumper, got it. Cipriano. Cipriano with a minute and a half to play, 73-69. Benford needs some help, gets it from Wolf. Taken away by Ritzdorf. Cipriano to Hahn. Got it, and he's found the three-point play coming as Wolf made the foul his third. What a beautiful series that was. Cipriano's been everywhere. Watch it all now. On the replay, and Cipriano with the steal, and again the lead pass. David Hahn all alone draws the three-point play. If he cashes in, Kearney State trails by only one point. There's a timeout taken now, and it's charged to Kearney State. It is a 73-71 affair, and I tell you, I've said it before and I'll say it again, these kids just won't quit. That's really unbelievable, and, and it's great to see the reaction of the press people along press row here, because as Tom has said all night long, Carney State will not quit. They, at four, about two and a half minutes ago, pulled to within three, and then Quincy comes back, they lead by seven, seemingly having control of the tempo of this ball game again, and Carney State all of a sudden exploding for five quick points. Now they're getting, let's watch this play again as the steal knocked by Richdorf, picked up by Cipriano. There's Hahn by himself, and the foul by Wolf after Hahn gets the basket. Now when we come back, Hahn will be at the line to finish off the three-point play. They may as well give Richdorf the hustle award because Cipriano will steal it if he doesn't get it. You know, it's something we haven't pointed out throughout the whole tournament. I don't think there's another player that has played here in Camp Arena in the past five days that follows his shots like Tom Ritzdorf does. Good point. Look at the crowd now, the Looper Legion going nuts. A two-point game with a minute 20 to play. How can you be down 14 points and keep coming back, then get down nine, get down seven, and now down by two and Hunt can make it one, it does. Inbounds with a minute 18 to play. Both clubs, two timeouts. Kennedy and both clubs are over the limit. Gives to Benford. Benford with four fouls. Kennedy comes inside. Drops it low for Benford in the lane. It was blocked by Mohanna and a foul on Mohanna. Mohanna will get foul number four. Check it, they'll give it to Higgins. Higgins will get only a second. Give it to Higgins. There you look at it. Curtis Benford again, the wisest man to foul. Suddenly he's made three in a row, however. One more to go. Two point difference. Cheryl Banks cannot. There he missed it. 
Cheryl Banks cannot be pleased with what's gone on with this club. They just have not done the concentration job that the Lopers have. But give the Lopers an awful lot of credit. Cipriano. Trailing by two with 44 seconds to play. Who do you want to take the shot, do you think? Well, Richdorf's going to hit it, and we're tied at, four, at 74. DeWalt, this is the position the Quincy Club would like to be in with the basketball. Both clubs with two timeouts, remember, 28 seconds to go, and wait a second, a timeout called by Quincy. They'll have one more. <laughs> well, the Legion couldn't be any happier. No matter what happens in the next 26 seconds, you got to like it. Watch Richdorf. You talk about calm and cool. Watch Tom, this kid. Tom Richdorf with six field goals in this second half, and he's a primary region. Carney State's back in the game from 22. He drills it. He had his heels right on the sideline there. And the Legion. How about them? There is the story. The only thing you need to add it to it is the time, which is 26 seconds, tied at 74. And regardless of what happens tonight, Quincy right back at it tomorrow. Or check it. Carney right back at it tomorrow. They will play either at 6 o'clock or at 8 o'clock. Quincy's got to like their uh, position right now. They're dealing from a position of strength with the basketball for 26 seconds, tied at 74. DeWalt, keep in mind right now, is sitting with 30 points. They get 29 points. Well, let's see what happens. We've got Cipriano and Hahn, Ritzdorf, Mohanna, and Higgins on the floor against Haney and Wolf. DeWalt, Benford, and Kennedy. Watch it now. That's Benford. 20 seconds. Wolf. 15 seconds. Haney. 10 seconds. DeWalt lost the basketball with six seconds to play, and Carney State is right on the brink again. Higgins fiddles with it. Cipriano, and no foul. Ritzdorf hit it, and the game is over. Ritzdorf hit it and wins the basketball It's game. good. They're going to score it. Look at the floor is being mobbed. Tom Ritzdorf is being mobbed. The final score on Carney State 76. Look at that mess. Great balls of fire. Who can believe it but these 3,000 odd fans here from Carney State tonight. They are in the finals. It's never happened before. The stands don't have anybody in them. They're all over the floor. Unbelievable. Look at this. They're coming out of the stands. There's no way anybody can stop them. Kearney State is all over the floor. The players have gone to the dressing room. We're coming back. The game is all over. Tom Ritzdorf at the buzzer dropped it in. It's a 76-74 win by Kearney State. That's the ball game. We'll be back with final comments in just a moment. Forget about banking hours. With First National of Kearney, you can bank any time you want with Bank in the Box. Your Bank in the Box card from First National lets you make deposits, get cash withdrawals, make First National payments. The Bank in the Box automated teller machine is always open at our auto walk-up facility at First Avenue and 25th Street. There's enough time, but 
There was enough time. I can't. tell you what, Carney stayed down for by 14 points late in the second half, and I, it's a credit to you guys to come back because I know there was a lot of people, maybe including myself, that finally had to admit to themselves that the Cinderella story was over, but it didn't happen. It looked kind of bad there for a while, but nobody ever gave up. You know, we didn't think about winning, we didn't think about losing. We just thought about, you know, we've got to keep playing as hard as we did all week, and everybody did, and nobody let up at all. And, it came out all right, thank God. Tom, you got beat by the best team that the Lopers have, have played in this tournament. What, what was that? You, you beat the best oh, team yeah. that you've faced in this no, tournament. No doubt. They, they were the best disciplined team, probably the best shooting team. They jumped well. They were just a great bunch. They were a great team, but, you know, I think it was just our desire that held us in there. On the front line, you did actually did not match up well because uh, although they're shorter than you by maybe an inch or two, their leaping ability just one put you out of business for a while. I know. We were looking up all night, watching them go over the top of us, and uh, we decided finally, boy, we better get in front of them and back into them and make sure they didn't come up anymore. And toward the end of the game, we started getting our share of the rebounds, and that's probably when it counted, and it's a good thing we decided to do it then. Coach Heaser, say anything to you guys at halftime that maybe uh, – picked you up, gave you that extra spur that you needed in that second half? Well, you know, there's a lot of people from Kearney down here, and we were just darn ashamed of ourselves for the way we played the first half. You know, the Kearney people are great, and all the people who are watching us back in Nebraska are great because, you know, we, we hear about all the support. Really disgraced because, um, you know, we felt like we let them down, and we just went back in the second half and proved that, you know, that that their faith in us is, you know, could be a true one, and you know, we just wanted to prove that. Tom, I'm going to give you a chance to say hi to all the fans back at Howells because you told me earlier today they were setting TVs up in any big hall where they could get more than 10 people in. A couple of bars had a lot of great things going today. There, they've got to be dancing in the street of Howells right now. I hope so. They were dancing last Saturday because they won their fourth Class C championship. And boy, I hope I can be part of a of a national championship in college for them too. And boy, you know, I, I still remember them back there and they're great. I'm still a part of them. They're a part of me. Can you think ahead at all now to what's coming up tomorrow night or do you even care to think that far ahead? Uh, yeah, uh, we know it's gonna be a tough game. We're just really happy to be in the finals and uh, it's just a big thrill for us. And you know, we're just gonna go out and give it heck again, you know. 14 points tonight, but still trouble at the free throw line. You gotta, you gotta work this thing out here one of these days. Well, at first it was, I was just playing missing them. Tonight I made one, but my foot was over the line. And uh, then I shot one from Mohanna. I guess he was making them, I wasn't. I don't know why they put me up with the line. And uh, I don't know, I just got to work it out before tomorrow night, and I, I think it's going to come. One last thing before we let you get back to your happy teammates. You've been on TV four times now, and I don't think anyone could write a script the way you guys have and giving the fans at home some of the best basketball bar any class, pro, NC2A, this has been tremendous. Yeah, well, it's, it's been exciting all year for us, and uh, we hope we give the fans a thrill because, like we keep saying, you know, they're great, and we hope that, you know, we can just prove to them that, you know, we're worth watching, and I hope we did it this week. Tom Richdorf with the shot that did it at the end with no time left. He had the last two shots, and I really don't know what else you can say. Tom Hobbins, we got another guy we want to talk to here. Steve, I really enjoyed your conversation with Tom, and I want to ask Randy a couple of things with regard to the timeout that you took, and you're trailing by seven, and you come out in some great defense and take the ball away on a couple of significant occasions. Is that what really got you keyed up? Well, I, you know, definitely coming down, coming out of that timeout down by seven, we had to do something to, you know, force a couple turnovers and get a couple breaks and get a couple key baskets, and we just got got some great base, great breaks and great steals, and we turned them into hoops, and then we were back in the ball game. We have talked so much about the fact that at one point how badly how badly it looked for the Lopers are down 14 points. The kids just don't seem like they want to quit. What kind of attitude prevails, or how does does it one guy pump the other up, or you just pump each other? Well, I'll tell you, I think, you know, everyone has their own ways of getting up for the ball game and getting ready to play, but when someone, you know, makes a great shot, gets a great st uh, great steal, you know, it just automatically gets a, gets a team flowing and gets us going, and, and uh, that's what happened today. I heard you say earlier that you thought Wisconsin Parkside had been the best team you'd played. What are your impressions now of Quincy? Oh, I... There's no doubt in my mind that I think Quincy's a better ball club. They're they're really strong inside and they're you know they don't have a lot of height but they all jump well and they're you know they're a well coached team. They handle the ball and they and they play good defense. 
Your coach, Jerry Heiser, was worried about having to come to this tournament and spend so long, although I know he's enjoying it. He said, I don't know about my recruitment program. He said, I wanted to get in the road. I think this may be the greatest piece of recruitment that you've had in a long time. Oh, there's no doubt about that. You know, we get, we're getting recognition, you know, throughout the, the country, and uh, people see that, and they, you know, probably hear of Kearney State for the first time, and, you know, it, it opens people's eyes, you know. What attracted you to Kearney State? Well, I'll tell you, coming out of high school, I was planning to go to a junior college, and uh, I think it was northern Idaho, and, and it was midway through the summer, and Tom Krupp came down to work at one of my uh, dad's basketball camps, and he told me about Kearney, and I wasn't sure that far away from home and all, and so I went out there and, and, and played and looked at the school and ended up, ended up changing my mind, you know, halfway during the summer. Randy, thank you very much, thank man. I enjoyed the game. Now, let's bring on Steve Anderson and Jerry Heiser, too. Guys that obviously are very happy, particularly you, Jerry. I know it had to be a thrill for you. It was. You know, it's just one of those things you can't believe. You always sort of wish something like that would happen, but yet you don't think it will. It must have just about stopped the old coronary for you when you saw the ball go off to Walt's hands right in front of you. Well, it did. You know, it just uh, we weren't going to foul. You know, we thought we'd make them shoot and try to only give them one shot. We thought if we went to overtime, we had some momentum, we might get them in the overtime. Steve and I were definitely impressed with Quincy. You must have really admired them. Oh, that's no, no doubt about that. We felt that we'd have to control the tempo of the game and uh, to be able to beat them, and we never. And they controlled the tempo all but maybe five minutes of the ball game. And, and of course, they've got some super players on that team, and we were just real fortunate to even come close. Steve? You didn't hear it coming onto the court. They were playing Rocky then and playing Rocky as you went off. 